Hello and welcome to the CMC Markets Monday Market Webinar with myself, Market Analyst David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 20th of November and the time is 12.15 p.m. London Time GMT. As always with our webinar, before we actually proceed, I'll just leave these, these risk warnings here on screen for, you, for yourself to have a quick read through. It's very straightforward. Uh, it, it, it essentially states anything that is covered in this webinar is merely just my, my, my own comments and my views as some general observations. It should not be construed as explicit trading and or investment advice. Uh, if you just have a quick read through of those and the other slides that I'll leave on screen, we can then proceed with the actual webinar itself. As always, with the kind of rundown of a webinar, at the very beginning of the webinar, I'll talk about the major uh, moves in the financial markets and news headlines in the past few days. Uh, then I'll also take a quick look at the week ahead. What are the economic indicators? What are the corporate stories that are likely to be the big, big uh, players this week? And then afterwards, the majority of the webinar will be myself covering the main markets, major indices, major, major commodities. Major currency and major currency pairs, and discussing potential levels to keep an eye out for. And as always, if you do have any uh, markets that you would like me to cover, feel free to enter into the chat box the markets that you want me to have a look at. Now that we've gotten the, the compliance section out of the way, let's just take a look uh, how things are going uh, in the financial markets. So even though we got off to quite a ne uh, fairly negative start. Uh, we, uh, in on the continent, we were expecting the German market to open about 70 points lower, uh, but we've actually now managed to kind of turn that around in the DAX. Uh, as, you, uh, as you can see here, things are looking quite negative. I'd say around 6 6 a.m., 7 a.m. this morning. If you take a look at the chart here and just give it, see how uh, see how much things have actually turned around in the last few hours. So very early on in the morning. We could see here that we're calling the DAX quite a bit lower, quite below the lows of of of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of Friday, but as you can see, we've managed to kind of do quite well as as the trading day has gone on. Uh, essentially, the big news out of the uh, out, out of well all of Europe over the weekend was that the coalition talks in Germany uh, between the uh, the largest party uh, Angela, Angela Merkel's Christian Demo Democratic Union. Uh, amongst other parties, we're looking to get a coalition together, and one of the kind of smaller parties, the uh, the, the Free Democratic Party, uh, had to walk away from the talks. They felt that the the negotiations were going their way, and it looks like the the, the coalition talks have now broken down. This obviously sent a lot of kind of shockwaves through the kind of German and also European politi political um, political stories, just because Germany is the largest economy in in the Europe in the in the Eurozone and also in the EU, they have quite a quite a substantial influence within both institutions. And while that country doesn't have a functioning government, things are a bit, things are a bit worrying. And on top of that, now that looks like uh, Germany is at a, maybe actually look to form other possibilities of, of some, some some sort of coalition, have a minority government, or worst case scenario, look to have an actually another general election, another federal election. And this, of course, obviously prompted uh, equity markets to be, uh, the German market to kind of start off quite negative. But as traders have gotten used to that, we've actually seen, seen the market that regain some of the losses it earlier made. Other big news over the weekend is that the talk that Theresa May is actually happy to pay a higher amount for the so-called divorce bill for Brexit. Um, pre in previous discussions, the EU were looking for something about 60 billion euros. Theresa May was willing to pay up to about 20 million pounds. There's quite a large discrepancy between the two. Now it would appear that Theresa May is at least happier to kind of meet somewhere in the middle or at least pay, pay a higher amount. And on the back of that, uh, that has given kind of renewed confidence to the UK's ability in relation to a potential Brexit deal. Uh, and, and also what we've, what we've seen is, as a consequence of that is a higher British pound. So the pound is up against the, well, across the board, but, but, but if, um, the more popular markets we trade here at CFC markets would be the pound versus the US dollar and the euro versus the British pound. So the euro is lower versus the pound and the pound is higher versus the US dollar. Taking a look now at our week ahead, uh, if, you go to our, if you go to our website and under news and analysis, and then from there, if you then click on news analysis, it will automatically bring you to this section here. If you filter by section, third one down, weekly outlook, we can see what are the major corporate and economic news events of the week. 
So taking a look now at the potential, potential numbers uh, in terms of what's, what's going on. Uh, tomorrow we have an update from EasyJet, the airline has, uh, has figures coming out tomorrow. On Wednesday we have an update from Thomas Cook. Bear in mind Thomas Cook were actually updated today. They got a positive uh, upgrade um, on terms of their broker ratings. Uh, we have Fed Minutes uh, on Wednesday night. Keep an eye on that if you're trading any currency pairs, if you're trading gold, or if you're trading any of the US indices. But it's looking fairly likely that the Federal Reserve are going to be hiking rates next month. Uh, I think the, the now focus is going to be on what will the Federal Reserve do in 2018. So the update, uh, the minutes will give us an update uh, on their thoughts from the from the previous meeting. Uh, taking a look now uh, and in terms of uh, some economic indicators, we have the flash PMIs coming out of France and Germany on Thursday, which will be covering in our economic calendar shortly. Uh, in terms of the corporate reporting calendar, as I mentioned, we have EasyJet coming, with numbers coming out tomorrow. We also have Big Yellow Group at half numbers out. Babcock International half year, half year numbers out as well. Scrolling down through the rest of, uh, of Tuesday, uh, we also have Dollar Tree in the United States, half uh, year uh, uh, quoting numbers out, as do Hewlett Packard Enterprises. All the popular stocks to keep an eye out for on Wednesday Biffa, John Deere and Co. And also Thomas Cook, the, uh, the, the the travel crowd. On Thursday, keep an eye out for Mothercare uh, figures out, and also as do Severn Trend and Par and Paragon Banking Group. And on Friday, it is a fairly quiet day in terms of the uh, in terms of the corporate reporting. Uh, as I mentioned uh, in our beginning, in terms of looking ahead to the week, uh, we have an economic calendar here in our trading platform. So if you're, when you're on our trading platform and you click on the Market Pulse tab, fourth option down, you can see the economic calendar. I'll just widen it out. It gives you uh, up to date as soon as the, the economic announcement is is, uh, is revealed. Again, okay, the details will be in the actual box. It also has a forecasted estimate of the kind of consensus of what analysts uh, are predicting, and also give you a breakdown of the previous number, so you can see whether something a market is expanding or contracting, or whether it is growing at a faster rate or growing at a slow rate. Uh, in terms of economic indicators, tomorrow uh, we're looking at looking at here the data. We've uh, net public sector borrowing from the UK, existing home sales from the United States. On Wednesday, uh, turning our attention, we have the Eurozone uh, consumer confidence numbers out at 3 o'clock in the day. We have durable goods from, from the United States at half one. And we also have the oil inventory figures coming out at half three, as we do every single Wednesday. Bearing in mind, we do have the update from the Federal Reserve Meds at 7 p.m. London time, UK time. Friday morning, uh, we, we, uh, we have the, on Thursday, sorry, Thursday morning rather, we have the very different PMI numbers out, um, services and manufacturing numbers from uh, the likes of France and Germany. And then scanning over to Friday, taking a look at Friday, we have the German IFO business sentiment indicator, and also we have, we have the PMI numbers out in Japan or earlier that night. So taking a look now at the, uh, the major markets, we'll have to start off now with the FTSE 100. We'll just have a quick scroll down and see what the FTSE 100 is doing. So first of all, we can, we can see that, that the large sell-off that began in November is still uh, very much in place on the FTSE 100. So I will be keeping an eye on this. It is a bit, a bit of a concern that the FTSE 100 is south of its 200-day moving average. Um, that is seen as a decent barometer. If you're north of it, your market's looking, well, up, mar the market's outlook is usually positive. And if you're south of it, the market's outlook is usually negative. So we've managed to find a fair bit of decent support in around this region here, in around the... 7,350 area. So while so that it appears to be kind of holding up forward now. So the downward trend is in place. Supports coming into place in around 7,350. If we and if, but if you look down here at the Mac the histogram, the Mac the indicator, you will see that negative momentum is still quite high. Uh, so if you do manage to break south of this area here, 7,000. 350 we could see it's back down towards 7300 itself or maybe even one of the, kind of the late September low of 7233 should we move north should we should we head back up north of the of the 30 moving average which comes into play in around 7400 the next level to potentially keep an eye out for well it's a uh, the low from the 
but if it is the low from early November, but it's also coincides with the 50 day moving average, this price area here in at 7,443. So these are areas to keep an eye on for should we actually push higher on the FTSE 100. Looking now at the German market, the DAX, so obviously I caught quite a severe sell off. Uh, at, at, uh, since well, largely since November, as you can see here, negative momentum is still quite high. We've, we've seen a small bit of cooling in negative momentum, but by and large, it is still quite high. The downward trend, uh, the negative trend, is still in place. Should we take out the, the November low at 12,847? That could bring us back down towards this area here of 12,705. And if we go south of that again, we could be heading that back down towards. 12,600. See a lot of consolidation in around this area here, and 12,600 coincides with the 100 day moving average. So, if we do manage to kind of push higher on the, uh, the Germany 30 on the DAX, the first level to keep an eye out for to the upside could be this area here in around the 13,100 region. Uh, they, that, that area was sort of the, uh, a, rough, a rough area of the highs. From, uh, from, the, from, the, from the middle of last week, uh, they kind of the bounce back before they kind of the additional move lower. But if they do happen to take out 13,100, the next potential level to keep an eye out for could be the, the lower end of this gap here that, that was created um, in the, at the, at the very beginning of November. And that price comes into play at 13,316. Uh, it is looking quite negative on the jury 30, so it may be. Um, some traders may look to actually hold off until see what the kind of the next move is, whether we look to head south, uh, we continue the southbound movement, or whether we actually manage to kind of fully shake off the negative move and actually re retake this area here north of 13,316. It's been relatively quiet in, in Spain recently, but I'll have a, I'll have a look at the, uh, the IBEX again. Um, the IBEX has been in, in its downward channel, the same downward channel that has been in largely since May. We obviously had quite a decent kind of push out of it here um, in late October, early November, but notice how very quickly it, it, it got caught up with the kind of worldwide uh, sell-off in global equities and it's back firmly in the kind of the downward trend that it's been in. So while the uh, while the the Spanish the Spain 35 the IBEX 35 remains south of its 50-day moving average, which comes into play just shy of 10,250, the the outlook could remain negative for the Spanish market. And if, if we do move, move move further south, areas to potentially keep an eye out for will be the well both the October and November low, which come into play in around well it wasn't it wasn't actually quite the November low, but it certainly was the October low at 9,866. We got down quite near there only last week. We got down as low as 9,875. So we were in quite close, we are in about nine points away of it, but didn't, didn't quite get there. So that's the niche to keep an eye out for the downside on the Spain 35. South of that, we could be heading back down towards this area here. We saw a bit of, we probably saw uh, the high from February, which come into play in around 9,637. But if you manage to do actually kind of snap out of this downward trend and manage to kind of break above the 50 day moving average, we could be heading back up towards this area here in around 10,500 or even the November high of, 10, of just north of 10,600. The US markets are looking in a bit better shape. Um, mind you, they were in, in far better shape before we actually went into this uh, sell off in the first place. So this was, was the all time high here. We traded a bit lower. We saw a steady increase in the negative in negative momentum on the MACD histogram. That, that negative momentum is still very much there. So we haven't seen any of the setting pressure decline as of yet. But we do appear to be sort of range bound or sideways trading. So if we do take if we do break below this area here, then one of the lows from late October at uh, 23,250. If we do break south of that. We could be heading back down towards 23,000 or even back down to the 50 day moving average, uh, just sh sh shy of that at 22,960. But if, if you manage to kind of maintain this floor here, we could be head back up towards 23,500. And if you take all that level, we could be like end back up towards the all time high at 23,625. Then beyond that, we'd be looking towards. Uh, 23,700, 800, and so on and so forth. 
the S&P 500 is not too dissimilar. Came off the all-time highs, traded lower, but has managed to recoup a fair bit of it. So similar, similar vein here. The all-time high was created here. The market started to push lower. The rate at which selling pressure started to ramp up here on the MACD histogram. Negative momentum was increasing. And now we've managed to be kind of, sort of locked within a bit of a, a, a range between 2,590 to the north and to the south, 2,556. So... We could be looking, so one, so we, we, we could be looking to trade within this range for for a, for a while before we actually get a, a break either direction of it. Uh, a break to the downside could send us back to the to the October to the kind of mid October lows, which is, which which act as support on a couple of occasions here at two thousand five hundred and fifty four or south of that um, down down as low as two thousand five hundred and thirty one from the kind of early one of the early October lows. Uh, previously acted as support but should you manage to snap up break north if you manage to break north um this level here at 2590 we could be heading back up towards 2600 and then north of that towards 2610 20 so on and so forth because let's face it the wider upward trend is still quite strong we just could be looking at a bit of a sideways trading or a bit of a correction as we approach the year's end Gold has been a fairly dull market for the last few weeks. But we've managed to get some uh, an interesting move out of it. So the broad picture for 2017, uh, this would be the lows. Of, this would be the lows of January here. The broad picture for gold has been to the upside. And if you look here, can I zoom in a bit more? We can see that this line here, that the 100-day moving average, the yellow line, is now at 1280. It's been largely hovering in around that price action. Maybe say ten dollars below, ten dollars north of it uh, for the last few weeks. But recently, we finally managed to actually push a bit higher in gold. It's made a fairly decent break north of it. It traded as high last Friday, up to twelve ninety, nearly nearly as high as twelve ninety seven. Didn't quite get there. That created a, a one month high for gold. As you can see here, that was confirmed by the pickup in the MACD indicator. We saw on the MACD histogram here, we can see positive momentum as, a, as pushed higher. So the momentum is with the buyers. The market's pushed higher, so it's, so it's confirmed the move. We've seen a bit of a pullback, but it's very surprising seeing as that it was a fairly decent move for gold that we saw on Friday, especially considering how, how, how such tight ranges we've had recently. So this could potentially be the beginning of a push higher in gold. What's spurring it all? We've seen uncertainty in global equity markets, so it's not really surprised we're seeing a bit of risk on risk off attitude, rather a bit of a flight to quality impact. Money coming out of stocks going into traditional safer assets such as gold. So if we do manage to continue on with this um, bullish run in gold, we could be looking back up towards the October high of 13.06, and then north of that towards 13. 13 13 16 and then beyond that up towards 13 34 and any, any kind of moves lower in gold could find support in around the 100 day moves moving average at 1280 notice how it acted support on, on friday and for a lot of for a lot of the month of november the market was trading within say seven or eight or ten dollars north or south of it so if we do happen to go south of 1280 the next potential potential area of support for gold could be this this low this level here in at 12.70. Crude oil, we'll have a look at now. Yeah, I'll cover the uh, the New Zealand dollar. Is it the New Zealand dollar versus the US dollar you'd like me to cover, or any particular ones? So I brought up the weekly chart on Brent uh, just because. The 200-week moving average is is on the uh, is on the radar. We're, we're we're currently sitting above it, and uh, this is here is the weekly chart for Brent crude oil. As you can see here, a few weeks ago we traded we made a decisive break north of it, then we traded back south of it, and now we're going to be kind of re receiving support from it in around this area here. As you can see, positive momentum was on the rise, but it started to decline ever so slightly. So it could be a sign. That we are seeing some of the buying pressure wane, but by and large, um, this 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 high that was created here was a 28 month high. So so the so the prep so the kind of wider upper trend is still intact. We just may see a bit of a move lower before we actually get before, before we potentially continue to move higher in Brent. So I'll look, flip over now to a daily chart and to give you show you an indication. As you can see, it's a textbook example of higher highs and higher lows and upper trend since since June here. 
So the market's in a fairly consistent upward trend. We're now on the 20th of November, on the 30th of November in 10 days' time, we have the OPEC meeting, and there's been a lot of talk from Saudi Arabia that they want to extend the production, production cut uh, beyond the end of March 2018 deadline that it already has in place. So what, with that in mind, the upward trend, uh, the chart is, is, is still in this upward trend, and the, the, the fundamental position could be that we could see a continuation of a coordinated production cut among OPEC members. So as you can see here, this it even actually stopped short of the $61 a barrel mark here. So just north of 61 for, uh, for the time being is providing support. Should we continue in this wider upward trend, we could be looking back up towards 65 bucks a barrel, and then north of that, 66 bucks, 67, and so on and so forth. Turning our attention now, it's not too, not too dissimilar on WTI, although WTI didn't actually quite get to its uh, 200 week moving average. It started off on the weekly chart. Similar view in that the market was pushing steadily higher. While the market was pushing higher, we saw a fairly decent increase in positive momentum on the MACD histogram. It didn't quite get, get as high as the 200 week moving average, but I shied away from it. That's probably the next big level to watch out for on the upside. The 200 week moving average comes into play at $58.20. And for the time being, uh, the market is receiving support from the, uh, from, the, from the high here in, uh, in February, uh, which also comes into play here at just uh, $54.63. I'll take a look now on a daily chart so you can get a better, better view of what I'm talking about. This here, this level here, $54.63. Just north of it, uh, and it, the market actually managed to find support in around the $55 a barrel region. So the upper trend is still in place. So we could be looking heading back up towards 58 and then up to around 58.20 for the two-day week move of the average. And then north of that, should we move beyond it, we could be heading back up towards 59 bucks a barrel or even $60 per barrel. I'll come on to the, the, the currency markets now in one second. Uh, I, I will be covering Euro Sterling. It's a very popular pair, pair here that our clients trade. Uh, that will be uh, one of the markets I'll be covering. Uh, in terms of the Euro dollar, uh, we managed to see the Euro, Euro actually kind of uh, shake off some of the losses that, in, that it incurred through September. So, so the, the downward trend that has been in place in September is slowly being eroded. The market has pushed higher, pushed higher here. Uh, last Wednesday, but it has come off ever so slightly. As you can see here, the positive move here was confirmed by a steady increase in positive momentum. It's a bit slightly worrying though that that positive momentum hasn't even increased any further. It's just stood stood where it is. So we don't know. So that, so at least at least the upward move was confirmed by the increase on the MACD indicator in, on, on the MACD indicator. If the market does continue to push higher, should we take off the October highs at 118.79 or even go as high as 119, then we, we, we could become more confident that the kind of wider upward trend is going to continue. But if you do fail, if the market does manage to turn over on itself yet again, because bearing in mind it has been in a slight downward trend since September, if the market does turn over on itself again, potential areas of support to the downside could come into play at 116.70, this area here, or south of that, in at 115.54, or maybe even down as low as 114.79, this area here, while the market was kind of ratcheting up higher highs in July. Taking a look now at the British pound versus the US dollar. Let's open the chart out now. Broadly speaking, as I, as I mentioned earlier on, the talk that Theresa May is looking to actually increase the size of the so-called divorce bill that's kind of brought some bullish sentiment, broadly speaking, to the British pound. Uh, but also bearing in mind, since the lows of March, the, the British pound has been broadly been pushing higher versus the US dollar. It obviously has had a few instances throughout November where we kind of dip below it, but it managed to kind of grind higher. And the last couple of sessions has managed to actually stay off the trend line support that's been in place since November. And it's actually managed to kind of, even though it's not a major coup, but it managed to actually hit its highest level seen since the 2nd of November. So if the pound can keep pushing up against the US dollar, and also notice how it swung from negative momentum to positive momentum. So this move here tells us that the, um, the buying pressure is with the, is with, with, the, uh, with the bulls, is with the buyers. If the market can manage to kind of keep pushing higher from here, 
The next potential area of resistance potentially could be the October high of 133.35. And then should we go north of that, we could be looking at this price area here. We saw a bit of consolidation in around the 134.52 region. And then beyond that, uh, we'll be looking to, we could be looking up towards the, uh, the, the high for 2017 in at 136.59. If you do move south again and manage to trade below this trend line support, it isn't necessarily an indication that the trend line is fully broken because we saw quite a bit of action uh, trading below it uh, and in around it for a number of weeks in November. So if we do move south, we could find support in at, at the 100 day moving average in at 131.23. And it's only really if you see a move south of, say, the 130 mark, could you then become a bit more, a uh, bit more concern for the upward trend and if you move south of 130 then you might be thinking to yourself right we could be looking to actually head south and if we go south of 130 the 30 moving average comes into play just south of one at of 129 in at 128 spot 91 i'll cover the euro versus the british pound now as I mentioned, the sterling did quite well on the back of the announcement that trades made that can do pay up on the brexit talks so when the market was pushing higher here in, in November, we saw a fairly steady increase in positive momentum. But notice how as the market has been dr drifting a bit lower, we're seeing positive momentum and MACD histogram actually cool off. So they, it's almost like the buyers are running out of steam. And also the high that we created here in November failed to take off the high from October. So we didn't create a higher high. But at the time being, uh, the market is sort of being sort of supported by the 50 day moving average which comes into play in around here in around zero spot 88 81 so if we move south of that we could be heading back down towards zero spot 88 or even back down to the 200 moving average in at a zero spot 87 79 or down to the, the the real asset test will have to be the low from november uh, which comes into play at zero spot 87 33 and if you do head south of that, there's a bit of consolidation in around the zero spot 86 level here from from uh, from May. So that's the next potential level to watch out for should we take out the November lows. Uh, if, the manage, if the market does manage to get the swing higher, if it does manage to take out the, the October high, we could be looking heading back up towards the 91 figure or indeed uh, one of the early September highs of zero spot 92.26. Take a look now at the US dollar versus the Japanese yen. It's quite a, quite a bit of selling pressure we saw on that market uh, in at the, very, at the very beginning of the month. So even though the dollar was gaining ground quite steadily versus the, the, the Japanese yen from, from September, the, man, the market managed to turn over on itself and since, for, si, since November has been, uh, has been pushing lower. And as you can see here, while the market was pushing higher, we, we then noticed that the market was pushing higher, yet there was actually ever so slight increase. The market, the, on the MACD histogram, the market actually swung, the momentum indicator actually swung into negative territory. And that's one of the reasons why I like to use this indicator, because while the market was going on hitting a multi-month high, negative, the indicator actually swung into negative territory. And the divergence between the two could be an early indication that the, the current upward move is running out of steam, which, which we now know it was. And as the market is pushing lower here, what we can see is actually a fairly steady increase in negative momentum. So with no sign yet that the, that the, that the selling pressure is coming to an end as the, the negative momentum is steadily rising. But we are nearing the 30 moving average, which comes into play at 111 spot 76. And notice how the market traded just south south of the eternity moving average before its continuation of the upward move in october so we could see a, a trade below that and uh, who knows it may, it may bounce off it but, but if you do get a decisive break or uh, move below the eternity moving average we could be looking like, heading back toward towards 111 or the low from the, from the middle of september in a 109.55 to the upside if you do manage to continue to get an upper the wider upward move that has been here for a few months and we could be heading back up towards the 114 level here or north of that in at the even at the November high in at 114.76. So I'll cover now I'll cover now the New Zealand dollar versus the US dollar. And as we're coming up to the end of the webinar, I'll just, just wrap things up then.
So I'll cover the New Zealand dollar versus the US dollar and then I'll just show you about all the weapons that we offer and then I will uh, wrap it up because it's now exactly quarter to one. What's interesting is that we're actually very close to the 200 month moving average on the New Zealand dollar versus the US dollar. We're pretty much sitting on it in around right here. Uh, it did act as a bit of support only last month in, but uh, earlier on in in the year in April it got there, but it didn't actually. But didn't actually. It got close enough to it, didn't actually quite act as support. We have seen quite a lot of uh, trading in around the 200 month moving average. So this is going to be a key level to watch out for. What I will say, as the market was moving lower here, we did see a fairly steady decrease in uh, positive momentum. I'll take a look now at the monthly chart, so the weekly chart. Similar vein here, the market hit, you know, hit a multi-year high in uh, in July of the summer, but I think it's clearly been pushing lower, clearly lower low, lower high, lower low. Not only do we have a lower low, but it actually managed to take out the previous low of 2017. This is, this is obviously quite concerning if you're long the New Zealand dollar versus the US dollar. We can see here that there's a steady increase in negative momentum. So the buying pressure is, is clearly with the sellers and it confirms a negative move in the New Zealand dollar versus the US dollar. Uh, in terms of the levels to keep an eye out for, I'll just flip over now to the daily chart. So as you can see here that only, only uh, on Friday we managed to take off the lows, create a new low for 2017. Uh, so clearly that's that's that's... In, in itself uh, is, a, is, is quite a clear, uh, in the, quite a clear uh, sign of, of where the market is heading if we're back to, to its lowest level and not seen since May 2016. So potential level, if we keep moving to the downside for this, could be the lows of May 2016, which come into play at 0 spot 0.6675. As you can also see here, the market was in a clear you no know, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower low, lower high. Kind of classic textbook example of a downward trend. And as you can see, each time, as the as the market was bouncing back, we saw a, a, a flip from negative momentum to positive, only to see positive momentum actually decline yet again. So the, it, this this positive move here appears to be running out of steam. So we could be looking to head in, be heading south yet again. That combined with the fact that we hit a multi-month low only last last Friday, so we could be looking back down towards zero spot six six seventy five, the November the May twenty sixteen low for the um for the New Zealand dollar versus the versus the U S dollar. South of that again, we saw a consolidation in around the zero spot six six region. But the market, uh, in terms of if we do see any levels, if we do see any kind of move, moves higher in the in the uh, New Zealand dollar versus the versus the US dollar. This area potentially here from the kind of mid-November high of 0 0.6920 or, or even the actual high itself for the month of November in at 0 0.6980. These are areas to potentially keep an eye out for should you see a bounce higher on the New Zealand dollar versus the US dollar. I'll just very quickly show you on our website uh, a few things throughout the day. Uh, some of the, I, I even covered some of the analysis today. Throughout the day we have the insight um, both uh, written uh, analysis and also um, this, uh, written analysis and also any webinars or videos of webinars or the likes that we do get posted to the inside section. So I've, I've talked about how this website, this webinar, this, this webinar was starting at 12.15. The link was uh, was posted on Insight. There will be a recording of this webinar and it will be available on Insight. I'll also tweet it out. 
this here is a chart forum uh, this is a quick of a quick kind of snapshot of a chart and a few other characters about what's going on the chart and certain prices to keep an eye out on both the chart forum and also insights can be found on the market pulse second option down insights third option down is the chart forum flipping back over to our website under the uh, under the learning section first option down where you saw it, uh, webinars and events you can see here that there's a list of other webinars that we have on the agenda. So later today, on Monday the 20th of November at, at, at 7 p.m. UK time, GMT, we have the Trader Development Program Part 3, the Trader's Mindset. On Wednesday the 22nd of November at 7.30 p, uh, 7 p.m. UK time, we have the in, in, Introduction to Digital 100s. And back next Monday, I'll be back in the hot seat at 12.15 on Monday the 27th of November. Uh, covering our weekly outlook for for um for the week uh, Monday weekly webinar covering the major events and also the major news and analysis of the particular week. Ivan, Dave, Madden, thank you uh, all from all of us here at CMC Markets. Have a good trading week and good luck.